you see a um, window full of OC benchmark stress test tools. Some of these tools are used for stress testing, some of them used to configure the graphic card, some of them are used to test the graphic card performance, some are used to show core temperatures, load levels, fan speed levels, memory usage levels, yeah, CPU temperature, uh, GPU information and all that stuff. Let's start with Prime95. Prime95 is a tool which can be used for stress testing and benchmarking. Um, if I go to the torture test you see a small window which allows you some settings on the test. This is um, common used blend test. See all the worker process start. The usage of the CPU goes up. The core temperature level uh, jumps up immediately. You see 45 degrees with the air cooled system, but you will um, notice that this will increase as long as the uh, Prime 95 is running in full load. You um, have to run it at least 15 to 30 minutes to see oh, the temperatures to stabilize and then you know what the maximum temperature of your CPU will become under high stress. I will stop this now. Stop. It will ask me how many workers I will stop. I said all. Yeah. Immediately CPU is getting cooler to normal and CPU load is reduced to normal. Okay, going to the next one. This is Fiormark. Um, it's a little bit dangerous uh, to use on dual GPU systems because the systems drain, drain very, very much power. And it happens that um, GeForce 590 cards um, were destroyed due to the high power consumption of the GPUs. You can just start a benchmark. And you see that the GPU load is going up, the temperature is going up. You can't actually see the benchmark right now because it's running on the main screen. Um, but this is um, not important yet. You see um, how the fan speed is going to increase. And yeah, as I noticed, uh, it is not recommend to use it on um, some uh, of the first dual GPU cards or um, board layout because um, the power drain is very high or you can you can combine this with the prime 95 to see if your power supply is sufficient or if it is too low powered I stop the benchmark and here I'm again yeah Let's go here. This utility is showing you CPU usage uh, as the name said it. The GPU meter we had it. It shows you the memory clock, the memory usage, the fan speed in RPM, the shader clock, the temperature, the PCE lanes used, and yeah. This is a core temp utility. All of these utilities are from the same author, uh, which you will find oscpu.com. Next utility I want to show you is uh, core temp. You will need this um, to get core temp um, applet running. It uh, is a tool which hides in the tray, and you will uh, pop it normally not on the screen up you will normally use this one. And you see um, the max levels, the current levels, the minimum, the load and everything just on one click. Frequency of the CPU is interesting. It's not 100% uh, correct, um, but it's sufficient for our needs. Next tool here, most people know it, is a 3D mark. 
This version is 11, Advanced Edition. I bought it uh, middle of last year. It is a standard benchmark tool. Many, many people use, and you can online compare your results with the results of Equisystems or other systems. So you have a good uh, feeling how your system is in comparison with other systems. This is Nibita. This is a tool to edit um, ROMs of graphic cards from the Venture uh, NVIDIA. And uh, if you see, I loaded r uh, ROM from my uh, card, the so Zotac GTX 590. And yeah, you can edit it even up to the boot settings. You can type in whatever you want and apply to the BIOS. Uh, then you have to add the BIOS to the card, and next time the changes will appear. Yeah, um, it's not that um, complicated, but you should have read through the stuff uh, before using it. This is. Um, dangerous because if you do anything wrong or um, put uh, wrong settings in it you will lose uh, the control over the BIOS of your graphic card you can't um, send them in because you lost warranty when you added it with Nibita. Yeah, um, let's go here. This is um, Tech Power Up <laughs> GPU set. This is um, utility which mainly can be used to control your graphic card settings and your graphic card um, features like the GPU clock, the memory clock, the shader clock. And this tool is handy because it sh uh, gives um, beginners information on what this stuff means. What is the number of ROPs? And you get an explanation in um, English or German or po uh, French or many other languages. So it's really useful for many people in the world. You get a revision information. It's all in there. You can have a look at the sensors uh, on the card. Uh, yeah, the clock sensor, the fan speed, the memory usage, and on and on. There's so many things in here. It's all on uh, on one little panel. Even you can switch to the other graphic cards installed or other GPUs installed. I have another GeForce 470 in the machine, so I just can switch with the tab to see how this thing is configured. Uh, or the Intel onboard graphic card, how is this configured and is this running or is it in standby or whatever. There are some other tools um, here. They are used to um, control the core clock of the GPU, the shader clock of the GPU, the memory clock and the fan speed. In this case it's set on auto. The MSI Afterburner is doing the same thing. It looks uh, somewhat more cool, but um, the EVGA thing will, will do. Uh, it is uh, more easy to understand and easier to to pick the GPUs. So it's up to you which one you use. But I find that this EVGA position is um, easier to use and easier to understand. Also, uh, you can save up to 10 profiles, and uh, MSI Afterburner can only save 5 profiles, but it shows the graphic card um, version or graphic card type and the driver version. Even there are pop ups of explanation what uh, does this mean, and stuff like that. So, good for beginners too. And you can apply at Windows Startup the values you set um, on both tools. This video is about um, OCing with the uh, Athrock Extreme Tuning Utility, or in short, Athrock Extreme Tuner. Um, this um, tool is uh, delivered with the newer Athrock. 
products, uh, gaming products mainly, and it comes uh, with high-end mainboards. And yeah, if you have a look at it, it looks very similar to to stuff that's from Gigabyte or Asus. It says version 1.1, uh, which uh, looks like not very um, stable and very clean now. You have the option to auto start it with Windows, and you have a close and minimize button, and that's uh, about the GUI. You have um, about five panels, or the color panels, uh, with um, seems like clock, fan temperature, voltage and if you go through it you see the fan control, the overclocking options, the UC DNA which allows you to store uh, OC profiles, it shows the BIOS version and the yeah um, power phase, you see how much power is drained by the system actual core. Let's have a look, uh, a deeper look at the hardware monitor. Yeah, you see the system is currently overclocked at 3.8 gigahertz. The frequency of the PCI bus is 100 megahertz, which is um, the desired frequency. CPU rotation is 38. And you see. Um, that's the temperature of the system. You see, there's no fan connected on the uh, fan ports on the board, and you see um, the core voltage levels. It's only um, uh, monitoring and reporting. You can't edit anything here. The fan control panel allows you to select the fan speed level for the connected fans to um, get the optimum cooling by optimum noise and yeah um, it, it looks cooler than it is I mean f if you put it on auto it's it's okay uh, but m if you have a large case with uh, standard fans on it these fans are uh, can be controlled because they only have uh, uh, n uh, plus and minus and no control speed control lines yeah, now we go into the more interesting overclocking, but you will be very disappointed because you only can change uh, the PCI frequency, which you normally don't do, and the CPU ratio. There's no possibility of overclocking uh, the RAM or fine tuning the RAM. You can a little bit adjust the voltage of the DRAM, but um, yeah, if you do not change the profile of the DRAM or the megahertz of the DRAM, so why should you change the voltage? It's, um, yeah, as I said, uh, there are missing features. If you go to OCDNR, you can load and save your profiles. Yeah, it's not that great. Here you see the model that is installed, it's a Z68 Extreme 7G3 the flagship of the Z68 mainboard series by ASRock and uh, let's go back um, to overclocking yeah if you change something here um, you have to reboot the system so I don't know why you ever should use this tool you can um, tune everything in BIOS much more precisely and if you have to reboot anyway so um, why should you do it in this uh, strange uh, utility